telemetry nominal. And here we go. We've had a successful liftoff of the Falcon 9 vehicle carrying the GPS-3 space vehicle into transfer orbit. We're a little bit less than a, than a minute into our launch, and we're preparing for that point of maximum aerodynamic pressure known as maximum Q. Vehicle is supersonic. And we've hit our point of maximum Q. This is the these are the strongest loads the vehicle experiences during liftoff. At this point now, it's just an easy acceleration up into our desired transfer orbit. All is looking good with the stage, the stage one trajectory. Experiencing maximum aerodynamic pressure. Now we'll have a very busy next 90 seconds. We have three events coming up, main engine cutoff, stage separation, and second engine start number one. That first event, main engine cutoff, or MECO, is where all of the nine Merlin 1D engines you see roaring right now on the screen on our Falcon 9 first stage are going to shut down. This is then followed by stage separation, or the separation of our first and second stages. And finally, the second engine start, where our MVAC, our Merlin vacuum engine, engine on the second stage engine lights up. You just heard now, we're starting to pump cold liquid oxygen through the plumbing of the MVAC engine to prepare it for ignition, just like we did with the Merlin 1D engines before liftoff. And just a reminder, we're not going to be recovering that first stage. So after stage separation, we'll, we pro we'll be providing no views of that first stage, only the second stage and the payload. And those three events are gonna occur in the next 10 seconds. Stage separation confirmed. And recognition. All right, this is great. We've had a successful MECO stage separation and SES-1. Our next immediate milestone is the fairing okay, deployment. Place. We're going to expose the GPS-3 satellite to the vacuum of space. And at, at plus three minutes and 21 seconds. Fairing separation confirmed. And there you see the two fairing halves have separated and fallen away from the vehicle, exposing the GPS satellite to space. You can also see one of the fairing halves falling to, into, back into the atmosphere in the camera view right there. Everything is running nominally from the second stage to our payload. Acquisition of signal Bermuda. You can see on your screen, the MVAC is continuing to burn, raising the highest point of the second stage's orbit, which is also called its apoapsis, into that intended target orbit. Now we're currently in the first of two planned MVAC burns, with our next major milestone being called C second engine cutoff number one, or SECO one, and that's scheduled for T plus eight hour, or excuse me, eight minutes and 16 seconds. Now, during SECO-1, we'll shut down the second stage's MVAC engine, which uh, you can see again on your screen here. Now, after we shut down the second stage engine, we'll enter into the first of two planned coast phases. Stage two is following a nominal trajectory. Now, we mentioned this uh, a little bit earlier in the webcast, but we're deploying today's GPS-3 space vehicle into a highly elliptical transfer orbit um, with a target in final intended target for the spacecraft being medium Earth orbit, or MEO. Now, for those of you who have followed our webcast, you may be more familiar with the terms low Earth orbit, where the International Space Station is, and geostationary orbit, where many communications and satellites reside in space. Medium Earth orbit is nestled between these two at an altitude of around 20,200 kilometers or about 10,900 nautical miles above the Earth. 
once the GPS-3 space vehicle separates from the second stage, it will use its own onboard engines to raise the lowest and highest points of its orbit to approximately the same altitude in that MEO range that maneuvers refer to as circularizing its orbit. Now, a, a fun fact here, GPS satellites are tilted with respect to the Earth's equator by about 55 degrees, and that allows them to, to provide coverage to the Earth's polar regions. That uh, orbital tilt is referred to as an orbit's inclination, and it takes extra power from the launch vehicle to safely reach. Uh, that high inclination orbit combined with the large payload mass are actually why we needed to reserve all of Falcon 9's performance today for the primary mission and why we did not attempt to recover today's first stage. Now we're just under two minutes away from Seco 1, again that second engine cutoff number one. And that engine is still burning bright, burning that RP-1 and liquid oxygen and we're continuing to boost the GPS-3 space vehicle into that highly elliptical transfer orbit. Now you may see the status bar at the bottom of the screen. You might be wondering, why does we have two coast phases for this flight as opposed to the typical one? And why does it take us so long to deploy the satellite for this particular mission? It's really twofold. Uh, first, this helps us get the vehicle back within the Air Force's ground station coverage, and, and also the Falcon 9 is very busy during this, this period. Uh, during the second coast phase, we make sure the second stage is completely shut down. Uh, the MVAC engine gets purged of that RP-1 propellant and gases, stage which helps us avoid contamination back. with the satellite. Uh, also, we begin to spin that second stage to help us stabilize the payload for when it's deployed. Once this coast period ends and, and the Air Force ground station coverage is regained, we're finally ready to deploy that space vehicle. And the MVAC is still firing, and we have just about under 30 seconds to go before that Seco 1 milestone. Seco. You just heard the callouts on the net of confirmation of Seco number one. Now we're just going to await confirmation of a good orbital insertion from the launch team. Loss of signal expected. Keep. Nominal orbital insertion. And there's that call out for a confirmation of nominal orbital insertion. Now we're going to head into the first of two planned coast phases as the Falcon 9 second stage makes its way to the next uh, engine start window. And during each of these coast phases, we'll take a quick break from our commentary, but you'll be able to follow the second stage's progress on the live tracking animation. Uh, we'll be back in about 57 minutes to relight the second stage's engine during second engine start number two, or SES2, which is scheduled for T plus one hour, eight minutes, and 52 seconds. Now, the second burn is much shorter than the first. It's actually less than a minute. And after that burn completes, we'll shut down the MVAC engine a second time during second engine cutoff number two, or SECO2, before we head into a second coast phase that will last about 49 minutes. Now, after that, we are going to deploy the GPS-3 space vehicle once we're back in that Air Force ground station coverage that you talked about, Mike. Hey, so let's head into that first coast phase. Uh, we'll see you back here live in just under 57 minutes. Don't go too far.
pronto, você tem outra vira. in New Hampshire. Let's make it. Thank you. 